Hey guys, welcome back to Kid Connect at Home. Today we are going to learn about another parable that Jesus told people in the Bible. Last week we heard about the parable of the wise and foolish builders. And today we're gonna to hear another really famous parable of Jesus's. Can you guess which one it is? Well, while you're thinking about it, let's go over our remember verse. Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. All right, well, I want you guys to pay close attention, see if you got your guess right about what parable we're gonna hear about today, and then join us at the very end for some worship before you leave. But let's now check out what parable we're learning about today as we talk about God is love. Well, Ulysses, that's quite fascinating. I I had no earthly idea. A twin. That's fascinating. It's 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 wonderful and quite frankly, it's it's almost unbelievable. Oh, but Ulysses, I I don't understand. This seems to be wonderful news of an overwhelming variety. What could possibly be the problem? Oh yes, yes, I I do see. Ulysses, I I can understand how that could be concerning. <laughs> In my incredibly humble yet firmly... <laughs> Ulysses, it is, it is quite rude to interrupt, especially when I am imparting great wisdom without charge or concern for my... <laughs> Ulysses, what could you possibly mean by their watching? Oh, good... <laughs> Jiminy <Jesus. laughs> <Jiminy> Christmas! <laughs> Hello there. Well, Ulysses, it seems that we have lost track of time again. <laughs> Hello there, children. It's quite nice to see you on this fine day. You, of course, know me from my award-winning directorial work. <laughs> no? Oh, well then, you, of course, know me from my considerable contributions to the field of science and discovery. Still no, okay. <clears throat> um, no matter then, my name is Professor Milton. By day, I am a director of the arts, and by night, I am a professor of the sciences. This here is my robot assistant, Ulysses. Say hello, Ulysses. Beep, 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 beep. Ulysses was just sharing with me news of an incredible, fantastical, and quite unbelievable variety. It seems that he has a long-lost twin brother robot. <laughs> it's quite interesting, quite exciting, isn't it? You could probably even call him your Ro-bro. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, Ulysses, I, I, I was just coming to that. I, I wish that you would learn patience. <laughs> yes, yes, Ulysses, I, I am aware of that. You see, Ulysses was just telling me that while he was initially overjoyed at meeting his long-lost twin brother, Robot, what did you say his name is? Ah, yes, Rick. His long-lost twin brother, Robot Rick. But... That initial joy quickly dissipated as he discovered that he has very little in common with his brother. You see, Ulysses is a scientific robot, steeped in the tradition of Newton, Einstein, and Hawking. Whereas his brother Rick is a musical robot, steeped in the musical tradition of McCartney, of Bono, and <clears throat> Bieber. It seems that Rick kept Ulysses up all night last night with his loud music. Ulysses is finding that it is sometimes quite difficult to love people or even robots who serve very different functions than we do. No, 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 I do not think that it is a good idea to simply move out and never speak to him again. I believe that God created us to love everybody, even robots who serve very different functions than we do. You know, this actually brings to mind one of my most beloved parts of the Big God story. And, purely by an act of coincidence, or perhaps by God's great providence, I have just completed a series of short films on this very topic. Perhaps this is the perfect opportunity for a grand premiere! Yes, Ulysses, I am quite excited as well. Perhaps we should advance to the screening room? 
Excellent. We shall clap on the count of three and be transported there with great immediacy. Are you ready? One, two, you, Lissy, stop. You, every, every time, just stop trying. You, you've never been able to reach, you never will. Please, just, you're embarrassing yourself. I'll, I'll do it for the both of us. Ready? One, two, three. Well, it looks like we've all arrived. So now that we are all here, I shall go ahead and introduce our first short film. This tale comes directly from the big God story and the book of Luke. In Luke chapter 10, a religious leader poses an important quandary to Jesus. He asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus answered, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And you must love your neighbor as yourself. Boop, boop, beep. Beep. A very good question, Ulysses. And the man asked Jesus the exact same question. Who is my neighbor? You see, at this time in the world, there were many people who, well, they didn't get along very well. The Roman people didn't treat the Jewish people very well. And the Jewish people, well, they pretty much hated the Samaritans. So when this man asked, who is my neighbor? What he was really asking was, Jesus, who do I have to love? I'd be willing to bet my entire collection of antique chemistry beakers that what he was hoping Jesus would answer is why you only have to love the people who are exactly like you. <laughs> but that's not what Jesus said, is it, Ulysses? <coughs> no. He answered him with a wondrous parable, which I have turned into a short film. <coughs> Another excellent question, Ulysses. A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used parables all the time to make a point or to teach a lesson. And my short film depicts this particular parable in all of its original glory. Are you ready to see the film? Excellent. We shall start it with a clap. Ready? One, two, three. There was once a man who was going from Jerusalem to Jericho. He was traveling along, minding his own business, when he was attacked by robbers. The robbers stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. However, not long after, a priest happened to be going down the same road. You would think the priest would help the man. However, when he saw him, the priest passed by on the other side. If he had helped the man, he would have been considered unclean. That would have been very inconvenient. Not much later, a Levite who also worked in the Jewish temple came traveling down the road as well. But the Levite ignored the man and passed on by. Finally, one more person came traveling down the road. This time, it was a Samaritan. Unfortunately, Samaritans and Jewish people didn't get along very well because they were quite different from one another. This meant that the Samaritan would not be likely to help a Jewish person. What's this? The Samaritan helped the hurt Jewish traveling man. He helped him up and even took him to an inn and made sure that he was cared for. Boop, boop, boop. What do you mean you don't know what this has to do with you? Bark, bark. Ulysses, more careful attention must be paid. Perhaps my next short film will clear this up. We shall start it with a clap again. Ready? One, two, three. What was that, Ulysses? Yes, I hope that the principal helps the young boy out as well. Why don't we watch and find out? Yes, Ulysses, she does seem very nice. Now, why don't we watch and find out what happens next? Burp. 
Ulysses, you must stop interrupting the film. It is quite rude. Boop. You don't know that. You are only assuming that the bully is going to make things worse for the poor beat up student. We must watch the film to find out what happens next. No more talking or, or, or beeping or whatever. Boop, boop, boop. Right. They hurt my leg and took my iPod. Here, use this. Well, you may not like the music that's on it, but you know, it's better than nothing. But this is yours. Why? Why would you give it to me? You needed help. And they took yours. Come on, let's get you to the nurse's office. Thank you. Now, do you understand, Ulysses? Exactly right. In telling this story, this parable, Jesus is making the point that he cares more about who a person is on the inside than on the outside. Jesus tells us that we must love our neighbor as ourselves. Based on what you saw here, Ulysses, who is our neighbor? Boop, boop, beep, boop. That is exactly correct, Ulysses. Everyone is our neighbor. They may be exactly like us, or they may be very, very different than us. God wants us to show his love to everyone we meet. Oh, goodness gracious, you're right. Look at the time. We must be getting back to the coffee shop. Are you ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. So, Ulysses, what are you going to do about your robo-brother, Rick? Beep, boop, 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 boop. Excellent. I think that sharing God's love with him is exactly the right response. Why don't you go find him now? Burp, burp, burp. <laughs> well, boys and girls, it would seem that Professor Milton's film prowess and delectable storytelling ability has done it again. Burp, 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 burp. Yes, Ulysses, that is what I meant to say. Jesus' astounding parable and incredible teaching has done it again. Remember, God tells us to love everybody. Ready? One, two, three. There's nowhere you won't go. Nothing you won't do. No place that I could hide. You were always in pursuit I'm never too far gone Always in your side When I wait for you You're always right on time You're always pursuing Always pursuing Always pursuing And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop chasing me You made a way for me Opened up the door Jesus, you have my heart Now and forevermore You're always pursuing Keep with 
with me oh. And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop